All right, so here I have the dispenser dispenser, a hopper hopper, a chest chest, and my first one tenth scale length of a dispenser. So let's slickety slack, crickety, get right into it. Some safety disclosures before printing. The nozzles are made of brass and brass does contain lead. So by using them, there's a chance that lead will be in the print. They do sell stainless steel nozzles that you can get. The PLA and PETG are plastics that are food safe, but the TPU is not food safe. Since 3D printing prints in layers, it can trap bacteria and also leave gaps for bacteria to grow inside the plastic. If you're trying to use this for food, keep in mind that it's not considered food safe. In a separate video, I'll be showing how to make the double chest, single chest, and the ender chest, and how to assemble them. Starting off with the chest, this is a flush hinge design so that there's no hinge on the outside, you can see there. On the bottom, I tried to melt this onto the hopper. All right, next up for the hopper, I melted the hopper into the top part of the dispenser in order for it not to wander off. On the inside, it just has some 45 degree chamfers in order to make everything fall in. The hopper doesn't really work all too well with the sunflower seeds since it's, it'll get caught up in this area and just get jammed but most of the time it will work. Here I have the mechanical inside of the dispenser. And so right here I have the first rendition. It's using a metal spring. You can see it wanders off since it doesn't have a helping uh, arm over here on this side. But if you press it, it will return just like that. This design did work, but it used a metal spring and I wanted to see if there was an alternate way of making the button be pushed back. Another issue is that the incline wasn't steep enough. So whatever I put here, it would get stuck even though it has a high drop. The next rendition, I increased the incline. And I was going to experiment here with the arm sliding this way. I felt like it would need to be dropped with a gap here in order for the item to shoot out. And I thought that having the stuff pile up here would make it impossible for the item here to roll down. Since this design doesn't agitate whatever is coming out, then whatever's in here would get stuck and wouldn't pop out. So for the final design, I went back to this design, except I added a supporting arm here and a plastic spring here. That can be printed along with it so that when it's pressed it will drop everything without being moved sideways keeping linear but also being pushed back by this little spring here in order to assemble it and disassemble it it does require a little bit of force so taking it out here just like that and putting it back on, you bend the tab here until it goes in to that space and then pushed in. So pretty tight tolerances. For the button, it's melted into place of the actuator here. So the actuator is slid into the two holes of either side of the button and then melted through the hole in order to fit it into place. The plastic spring here is made out of PLA the same and it just pops into place of the base right there. And it will over time be bent. And so if it's bent too much, you just flip it over. And now the way that it bends will help spring back the button. Finally, for the body, in order to put it on, you start from here. And once you have it set down on the base, then you can help the button get pushed in to the slot and then lock it down into place. And now you have the button working. And on the inside, you can see 
opening and closing. When scaling, keep in mind of the diameter of what's being pushed out. If you want to use M&Ms being dispensed, I recommend scaling this up 150%. If you want to use it for peanut M&Ms, I recommend scaling it up 200%, two times the size, just like this one. When dispensing these, it requires a quick tap. If it's too long of a tap, then multiple will fall out. So for the scaled up version, it's exactly the same design, just scaled up by 200 or twice the size. So you can see everything here is the same. Pushing this will drop whatever's inside. Just like that. The spring works the same, except this time it's printed in PETG. The issue with this design, you can see a lot clearer when it's scaled up. It's not using all this empty space around. It's only using this space as storage and relies on the hopper for most of the storing as well as the chest itself. I'll be working on another bottom design uh, when I make a dropper version and hopefully fix this issue of wasted space. Anyway, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. And thank you for watching.